Basketball fans, Akeel Augustine, Javon Shepard, Sherm Hamilton. On this show, Raptors, today, I am the voice of the fans, unfortunately. So whether they're being reasonable, unreasonable, they're always passionate. You're usually <laughs> unreasonable. Okay, so I joined them. Um, huge conversation online. Really excited coming out of this All-Star break. You see what's happening with the Brooklyn Nets. You find out about the Trey Young injury, and so the conversation starts to percolate. Well, do we continue to focus on the future and maybe securing that sixth pick, or is the play play-in the option for this group. Now, some people say play in for what? I'm going to start with you, Sherm. Your thoughts on the kind of fork in the road the Raptors are at in terms of committing to focusing on their young guys or securing that play For me back. personally, there's yes. no focus fork in the road. Okay. And I think when you're talking about young players and, and getting them reps and development, you need them to experience the highest level of intensity. You only get that playoff basketball okay and if they can get into the playing game and and give themselves a chance to feel a taste of it because it's not the whole thing yeah but it's intense it's much more intense than regular season playoffs play. light one and done that's a tough situation on a professional level so i think that if they can get in you get them in get them that wear and tear the scratches the, the understanding the the emotion of it the intensity of it and you take that out into the summer and you build off of that. I, I don't think, as young as this group is, you necessarily look at adding more youth as a priority as opposed to getting this group the experience they need. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a no-brainer, right? And I think with, with young players, you've got to establish a culture. You've got to have them in those moments where they need to win games and you know breed good habits. But also, bigger than the players, this is a young coaching staff as well, right? Yeah. So. They've got to learn those those close game situations. They've got to get better, you know, late game, after timeouts and so forth. And I think you've got to practice winning now to do that. You earn yourself. Let's just say you land a, a top six pick, and they're coming into a culture that's not winning, doesn't have winning habits, um, hasn't been in those situations. You're still two years behind, right? So give me, give me winning now or an attempt to win now and get these guys experience, get these guys the reps and development that they need. And, Again, we've already established you're building around Scotty, right? So he needs to, you know, foster his game and become, you know, more of a dynamic scorer, be in a situation where he has to control the game for the four other players on the floor. I think that's more important than anything. I know you expected me to say, no, get the draft pick. I can go play golf. <laughs> but see, I'm mature. I spared I'm grown. you that one. I spared <laughs> you that one. Okay, but I, I, on the flip side, though, like, is there any interest, like, Everyone talks about this sixth pick being a, a weak draft. Does it also kind of add to um, your drive for the playoffs, knowing that keeping your pick next year in a deeper draft looks a lot better? Yeah, I mean, it comes into play. Yeah. And by by default, basically, if you're trying to get into the play-in or if you're trying to hold on to the – it's all going to shake out itself. And then I think, to, again, the priority is the experience, the high reps at the big level. Obviously – in the the long view picture, you're thinking, well, next year's draft is going to be pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be pretty good. This might be an option. So, but you have to deal with what's in front of you. And I think, personally, I get them to reps, and I mm -hmm. figure out who they're going to be, and kind of in pressure situations, what who I can count on and what I can see from guys. We also have to acknowledge that there's so much uncertainty in the draft. Right? Yes. I mean, this, this is why it is a draft. This is why it's the lottery. That's yeah. why they got a guy like Ochai and traded a pick because he's better than potentially what yeah, a pick you don't could be know, in that situation. It doesn't matter where your pick lands. I'll, I'm, there's no there's no LeBrons in, in these drafts, right? There's no There's Wendy's. just a Cooper flag who I yeah. like a lot. There's a Cooper flag. <laughs> he's decent. Um, so you really don't know what you're getting. And look how many good draft picks have, have come late in the drafts or late in second round. Yep. Um, so there's so much uncertainty. I'd rather give me the, the, the guarantee, give me the certainty over uncertainty. All right, enough of players we don't have. Let's check in with the players we do have. How much does it open up the offense and just things that you can do offensively when you've got kind of a, a hub in the middle there? Um, yeah, playing with a passing big is great. Um, just playing off the ball, getting cuts, um, getting behind the defense. Um, I feel like the second unit, we should do that a lot more um, just to get the ball movement, um, get better scoring to help the starting unit. Um, but playing with passing, passing bigs are great. What, what's the learning curve like when, I, I mean, you guys have a pretty set second unit now, Kelly comes in. Does he need time to get to know you guys in terms of, like, where you like the ball, where you want the ball? Do you have to get to know him? I or think we it, all need to figure it out. Yeah. Um, we're all, what, basically new. The whole second unit is new. Um, Grady's first year. Um, so, I mean, we're just all trying to figure, figure it out. Um, it's been tough. The, uh, when you look at this part of the schedule, 
having a plan possibility is it is it kind of a good thing just to focus on even if uh, you know it's not like you're gunning for a title but does it kind of keep people focused keep people yeah um direction? i played in the plan like two years ago um so it was great it was a good atmosphere um we ended up being in cleveland um when i was in brooklyn so it was good um i mean we're definitely trying to get there i mean you never know what happens you know like i said as a as a player you got to be as steady as you can evil even keeled and even uh headed and you know go in and be a professional and you know keep getting better and put your best foot forward every day because you know you put little building blocks on you know that's how you you build a tower or building i mean it's not going to come overnight um so you got to keep those habits and get you know a little bit better every single day um and you know hopefully it translates into to wins and then you know this year next year wherever it is Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, you definitely have something to play for. I mean, I think without that, it would be statistically really hard. <laughs> but, I mean, shoot, if, if you can sneak into that 10th spot in that play-in, you know, anything can happen. All of a sudden, you have a playoff series, and you, catch, you get hot, and now you're rolling, and now you build your confidence, and you never know what happens. Thanks for watching the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel. Check out our latest videos and subscribe for more. Gary, sidestep, three!